Dr. Rudy Johnson and his wife Lorraine were approved in May of 1958 to open the field of Peru for the Baptist Bible Fellowship. After deputation and language school, they arrived in Peru on July 6, 1960. During the next 16 years, they established their first church, and out of that church, 15 missions were started, which later became churches. Two of these churches have had a record attendance of over 2,000. In 1965, the Bible Baptist Seminary was started and is still preparing Christian workers today. In May of 1976, the Johnsons returned to Miami, Florida to begin the Spanish Baptist Bible Institute to train Spanish-speaking people in the U.S. to reach their own for Christ. They also started the Spanish Bible Baptist Church, which is now bilingual and called Global Church and pastored by their son, Russell. During the early 80s, they worked with the missions office in Springfield, Missouri. They spent most of their time in missions conferences across the country in 198 churches. During these three years, over $6 million were raised for missions. In 1992, Rudy and Lorraine returned to Peru at the request of the Peruvian president and started a new ministry to help more than 200 national pastors in their churches. During this time, he pastored a church across the street from one of the major universities in Lima. They saw the congregation go from 17 to over 400 and a five-story building was built. On July 5th, 2000, God once again did a totally unexpected thing. He called Rudy and Lorraine to one of the most unique cities on earth, Cusco, Peru. They started a church in Cusco and then moved their ministry to Pisac, a city 20 miles away. This is where they opened their camp, Dambo de Gozo. They, along with their team, started a sports ministry in several public schools, a radio broadcast, a bilingual elementary school, and hosted many groups and pastors' conferences for training at the camp, and also had their most successful outreach called Open Doors. They have had over a thousand on five occasions with a high attendance of 1,519. In October of 2010, Lorraine and I were invited to the first church that we started, which was celebrating their 50th anniversary. There were several highlights during the week, but one of the greatest was they recognized 44 pastors and many of their wives that are out of the church and are now serving around the world. They asked us to cut the cake, and at that time there was a special uh, invitation read from the Congress of Peru that we were to appear there in November. On November 11, 2010, the Congress of Peru presented the Congressional Medal of Honor to my grandfather, Rudy Johnson. The award stated, the President of the Council of the Medal of Honor from the Congress of the Republic of Peru, whereas the Council of the Medal of Honor from the Congress of the Republic of Peru has conferred on this date to Baptist Pastor Rev. Rudy Neal Johnson in recognition of the distinguished pastoral and educational labor carried out over 50 years to benefit the moral, spiritual, and democratic formation of the children, young people, and families of Lima and Cusco. That night when I got home and was able to sit down and actually read the document, I knew that it would have never been possible it had not been for my friends and faithful churches who have prayed and given to make all this possible. And so at this time, I want to give this presentation as just a way of saying thanks, and we love you. The faithfulness of their supporting churches has allowed them to work with 19 BBF couples and four single ladies over the past 59 years. God has allowed Rudy and Lorraine to build 50 buildings and today remain debt-free. They have never had an overdraft and never had a need that God did not meet. Today they know of over 300 churches in three different countries that are the direct result of your faithfulness and God's blessings. Rudy and Lorraine are eternally thankful for your years of support and God's faithfulness. Is my mic on? I have to say, this is not easy.
to have to say goodbye to what you've loved for so long. I've heard pastors say on Monday morning they wanted to resign and get out. But that never happened to me one time in all these years. And this church has been a big part of it. So this morning we're going to do something a little different. He's already introduced Lorraine. We've been married now for 64 years. Four months and 18 days. <laughs> we have never one time talked about divorce. We've both considered murder. I've been working the last couple of weeks trying to think about the best year of my life. And I have determined it was in 1953. In January of 1953, I was in Korea. The end of that month, we went to Japan to take on supplies. I was in the Navy. And while we were there, I got a telegram that my dad was sick. And the Red Cross had made arrangements for me to fly back to Oklahoma City and go home and be with my family for a while. So I went back to Morrow, Oklahoma, a little town of about 3,500 if you count some cows. <laughs> and uh, after I'd been there a few days, I decided to buy me a car. So I bought a nice looking car. And on Saturday night, as I pulled up at the only stop sign in town, all the kids in the drugstore ran out and got in my car. They were all sitting there. <laughs> and Lorraine jumped in the front seat and got right there beside me, and I couldn't get her out, so I married her. <laughs> but we made each other a promise, some promises before we got married. I had mine all written out, and she had hers written out, and we went down and very seriously talked about them all. And uh, what she said, number one on her list, was you promise to go to church with me every Sunday. And in these years, I can count on my hands the Sundays we've missed. God has been good. Now, after that was over, we got married on the 4th of June, the week after she got out of high school. And uh, then it was time to move up by the base and get started with life. Everything was going good. We went to church, found a little church. For the first Sunday we were there, we were in a, in a little new church, or not a new church, but a little church, new to us. Mostly old people and a bunch of 13 kids sitting on the back row of high school age kids, most of them. And so what happened, I started watching these kids and how they're passing notes and doing all the things that kids did in those days. What ended up happening was that after a month in that little church, I told Lorraine on the way home one day, I'm not even saved. I'm a member of a Baptist church, but I'm not even saved. 
If what he said this morning is true, I'm not saved. So I went to the pastor's house that afternoon. He answered my questions, and that night, while he was preaching, or when he finished, he gave an invitation, and he said, if you want to, just let go of the chair in front of you and just come up here and kneel and someone will help you. And I remember letting go of the chair in front of me. Walked up and sat down on the steps that came up to the platform and the man that was leading the music picked up his Bible and came and sat down beside me and led me to Christ. I was baptized and we started a whole new chapter in our life. August comes up and uh, on Wednesday night in August, a pastor from somewhere else, a friend of our pastors had come through town and was gonna catch a train there to go who knows where. So this man, the pastor asked him to preach after he took him out to eat. And the man got up and he said, you know, I didn't know I was gonna be here tonight. I didn't know I was gonna to have to preach tonight. But God has given me the opportunity and I wanna share with you the verse that changed my life. And he asked us to open our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 6, and verse 38. Please open your Bibles. Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Then he started and started telling the things that had happened in his life and what God had done for him when he determined to start tithing and giving to God in a big way. That night on the way home, I said to Lorraine, I said, uh, maybe we ought to start tithing. She said, I already do, but I was waiting on you. So we started tithing, 10%. The next four months, every month, we had more money come into us. First of all, I'd just gotten married, so I, I got extra money to take care of her from the government. Well, the next month, I took a test, and I raised up another pay grade. And once I raised up another pay grade, they came to me and said, now that you're at this grade, if you are interested, you can fly and you'll get hazardous duty pay. So I did it. And then Lorraine got a real good job at a big truck stop as an accountant. And man, we were doing good. About Christmas, I said, honey, you know what? This tithing thing really works. <laughs> this tithing thing really works. Let's start giving 12% instead of 10. And she was in agreement. She was in agreement. That don't always happen, but she was in agreement. Anyway, we started and we determined 
that we could give 12, then 15, then 18, then 20, and 22, and 25, and see where God would take us. Because he said in Malachi, he said, trust me, and see if I cannot open the windows of heaven and pour out upon you blessings that you'll not be able to receive them. And that's what we've done. Forty years ago, this month, or the month of November, we started the church that Russell has today. And when we started that church that year, we gave 43% of our total income to the Lord. Let me tell you something. It works. It works. I've built 50 buildings. And I've never had to stop a building program because I didn't have enough money to move on. I've never had an overdraft at the bank. God has supplied all of our needs according to his riches in glory, just the way he said he would. And because everyone else in my church saw me doing it and saw what God was doing, when my church had 500 people in Sunday school, every member of my church but two were tithers. And it made all the difference in the world in everything we did. And then all these pastors began to surrender to the ministry because they weren't afraid that if you get in the ministry, you starve to death. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God knows exactly what he is doing. Every person here, he says the same thing to all of us. I'll show you something. The same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. If you want to pick up this cup and you want to fill that up and give it to God, that's the way he's going to bless you. Lorraine and I decided to choose the big one. And I'm going to say it again. It works. It works. Trust me and see if I can't open the windows of heaven and pour out on you blessings till you'll not be able to receive it. Lorraine got a call on the telephone before we left PSAC. And uh, it was a pastor from Charlotte. And he said, we had a missions meeting last night and found out for some reason your name is not on the list of our missionaries. I don't know how it happened, but we took care of it then. We haven't sent you your money for 18 months. They normally send $100 a month. So we're going to make that up. So when he sent the money, he sent $3,600. Well, that wasn't a bad deal. And I said, why did that happen? Why did that happen? I get a call from another preacher and said, I've got an idea that will help the missionaries. And he told me what it was. I listened, thought it was a pretty good idea he had. And I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think you're on the right track. He said, but I've got to raise $3,600 in order to do it. I said, uh, I'll send it to you. He said, what? I said, I'll send it to you. I said, uh, I've got $3,600. My money is as good as anybody else's, and it'll be a lot quicker. 
So I thought he sent him $3,600. Give and it shall be given unto you. It's still in the book. I gave, sent the money. And about two weeks after that, a church from California sent a group down to help us like your church did. And uh, the pastor said, uh, since you've been gone and something new just happened, said uh, in the States they've just come out with a brand new $100 bill. You remember that a few years ago when the new bill came out? And so he said, uh, I thought you might like to have some. And he gave me 110 new $100 bills, $11,000 to replace the 3600 Trust me and see if I can't open the windows of heaven and pour out on you blessings till you won't be able to receive it or won't be able to explain it even. It's just God. We chose the big cup. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? If everybody in this church that is a member would tithe, this church would never have a need for anything and could do things far beyond what you're now doing. Am I right, preacher? That's the way it is. Determine which cup you want to use. I want to thank you for all the years. We're going to be neighbors now. I'm going to be showing up from time to time. What do you ask you to pray for us? I can't drive anymore because of my eyes. Lorraine can't drive because of some medicine she's taking. So somebody else has to take us everywhere we go. But I'll be here, and we want you to pray for us. Thank you for the good life we've had. God bless you.